Good afternoon, Music Theory 1 students. I uh, wanted to get our first video assignment going with you, and so the first week is pretty easy. Uh, so by now, you should already have your textbook. All right, it should look like this. Should have gotten it in the bookstore. It should have come with a card. And your assignment here for the weekend and going into Monday's class is to read Chapter 0, uh, which introduces the ideas of pitch, the staff, and rhythm and meter. Uh, gets things pretty simple for you. Uh, so this video is going to be pretty short. We're going to cover half of the first chapter just talking about the staff and pitch. Uh, so let's get into things here and we'll get going. All right, so here's an excerpt from your book. That uh, This comes from the ebook on the website using the digital resources that comes with your textbook. Uh, this is where we get into defining how we read notation. And this introduces you to the concept of the staff, which is just a collection of five lines together and those five lines are further specified by adding a cleft to the left, which we're going to get to in just a moment. On the staff, the higher the notes go, the higher in pitch they are. The lower on the staff they are, the lower in pitch the notes are. To define the pitches, we put the notes on either lines or spaces. On the staff, there are five lines and four spaces. Combined, that leaves a total of nine pitches, but there are many more pitches than that. So when the pitches go above or below the staff, we add ledger lines just for those notes and as far up and down as those notes need to go. In order to define pitch on the staff, we use clefs. The main clef that you'll see throughout the semester is the treble clef. The circle towards the bottom half of the treble clef will encircle the line that we'll define as G. The next one is the bass clef. The pitches on the bass clef sound lower than those on the treble clef and the two dots on the bass clef will go around the line that will be defined as F. The third clef that we'll see is called the C clef and can be used in a variety of positions. On the C clef, the inside of the center will encircle a line that will be defined as C. So I've started to mention some letters to you. And in music, we define pitches by letter names using the first seven letters of the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Now, of course, if you look at a piano or a keyboard, there are many more than just seven notes. So once we get to G, we just go back around to the beginning to A again, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and so on, going around through that cycle of seven letters to define all of the notes. So here's an image that's taken from page four of your textbook, and this shows you the grand staff, which is a pair of two staves. The top one has the treble clef, and you see the treble clef in its position with that circle around the second line from the bottom, and that defines that second line as G. On the bottom, you see a bass clef staff with the bass clef in its position, and the two dots of the clef are on either side of the fourth line from the bottom, and that line is now defined as F. Above the grand staff, you can see the piano keyboard represented, and that shows you where all of the notes line up with their pitch names. You may notice that the pitch names shown here line up only with the white keys on the keyboard. So the next question is, what are the names of the notes on the black keys? Before we can talk about the black keys on the keyboard, we need to quickly talk about intervals. The word interval is used in music to define the space between two pitches. In this case, we're going to keep it easy and use the two basic intervals, the half step or semitone and the whole step or whole tone. A semitone is defined as one key and the next adjacent key or the key that is touching higher or lower. Then we have the whole step, which is where you skip over a key and go to the second key away. Now how this relates to the black keys is by using the word accidentals. If you move from a white key to go to the next black key to the left or lower, we call that a flat. If you move to the next black key higher or to the right, we call that a sharp. You can see that the flat sign looks a little bit like a letter B, whereas the sharp sign looks like a tic-tac-toe board or the hashtag. When we use the flat and the sharp with a pitch, we say it after the letter name as in C sharp or D flat. However, when we're writing it on the staff, we indicate the sharp and flat sign before the note head on the staff. Once again, here's an excerpt from your textbook. This is from page six. 
This shows you both in notation how the accidentals are used with the note heads on the staff, and you also see the written out how you would say that. Uh, for example, C sharp and D flat, which are the same note. D sharp and E flat, again, these are the same note. When they share a note name like that, we call them enharmonics. That is, the same key on the keyboard can be defined with multiple letter names. This covers all the material that we need to know for our next class session on Monday, August 26th. Be sure you review everything uh, in the textbook from page 2 to page 7 to be prepared for Monday's class, and the remainder of chapter 0 will be covered on Wednesday's class.